guys. So today's video is going to be another disappointing products video. I like to do these videos every few months because you guys know I am constantly trying out new makeup. I'm always trying out new things. I'm always buying new things. I'm always getting sent new things. So I'm constantly trying new things like I've said a hundred times. And I would say for the most part I tend to like everything or at least I tend to make it work, find a use for it. But there are just some things I'm like... Mm -mm. Some things just don't work out for me for one reason or another, which is why I have to give these disclaimers I know they're annoying, but I just gotta say it if something is in this video and it's your holy grail product Please don't take that personal We're all so different and we all like different things and what works for you might not work for me and what works for me might not work for you I mean I watch a lot of disappointing products videos or like products I regret buying videos and a lot of the times I'll see products that I really love and I'll be like oh man That sucks that it didn't work out for them because I love it and I'm sure we can all relate to that. We're just, we're all wired so differently. So these products specifically just didn't, didn't tickle my pickle, didn't work for me. It's just, just something about them, something about them I, I don't like. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a bang here. I feel like this is a lot of people's holy grail foundation at the moment. This is the YSL All Hours Foundation. And there's only one reason I really, really don't like this. And it's because it breaks mama out. I have been trying it out on and off for a while now. And this just, it breaks me out. It doesn't really give me pimples. But the next day after I use this, I'll notice I have a lot of whiteheads all over my face. Or I don't know if they're whiteheads exactly, but they're little white bumpies all over my face it like really irritates my skin the back of this foundation says children under six months of age ask a doctor if you're six months you can't rock this foundation but if you're seven months old you can put it on i don't know what's in this product that irritates my skin so much i don't know if it's like the fragrance because it does have a scent but i have a lot of foundations that have a scent that don't break me out i don't know what it is and obviously i'm never ever gonna put this on my face again for that reason so i paid a lot of money for these and it just didn't work out for me, which is a bummer because that's expensive. But honestly, I have so many other foundations I like way more than this that are so much more affordable than this. So it's like, I mean, I liked it. It had a nice finish, but I wasn't blown away by this foundation anyway. You know what I'm saying? So this just, it just, it's not my cup of tea. I don't know where to put this. Okay, so this next product isn't terrible. It's just, I, I don't like it. This is the Sigma Chroma Glow Shimmer and Highlight Palette. I like the idea of this. I like the color selection. Like, I like where they were going with this. It's supposed to be kind of like a more colorful highlighting palette, which even though I don't really gravitate towards, like, the blue, pinky, purple highlights, I get it. It's nice. I just don't really like the formula of these highlights all that much. They're very dusty, and I feel like they don't really highlight the face. Like, this one in Peaceful is almost matte. It's not matte, <laughs> it's not matte, but it doesn't give you a highlight to the skin. And I thought this was going to be the one I liked because it's the most natural looking one in terms of color. But it's so chalky and dusty and I don't like how it applies on the skin. This one in Ambrosia is just a little bit better, but again, it's like uh, dusty. I don't know how to explain it, but the formula isn't very highlighty. It feels powdery and dry and I know that powders are dry, but it, but it feels like a dry powder. Am I making any sense? <laughs> I hope so. The only two I like are Zeal and Felicity. Oh, Felicity Smoke, huh? These are pretty. They're colorful, but they have a nice reflect to them. They look like highlights on the skin. They're less dusty than the other shades, so these are nice. But I, ju I just don't like the rest of these. And honestly, I want to see Sigma do something interesting and different. I don't know. I feel like nobody talks about Sigma anymore. It was one of those YouTube brands like back in the day when everyone was using Sigma brushes and everybody loved Sigma and then it kind of like fell off. I was never like a diehard Sigma fan. I do like a lot of their brushes. I still use so many of their brushes. They're great brushes, but their makeup has never blown me away. I even gave it to Amelia and she was like, girl, I don't want this. <laughs> she didn't like it either, so I don't know. <laughs> Can we talk about this e.l.f. hydrating gel mist? Please, can we talk about this? e.l.f. is one of my favorite brands, so I'm not trying to hate on e.l.f., but this is a gel product in a mist. So just, just imagine what that feels like when you spray it on your face. This is not good, I don't understand it. e.l.f. has a lot of mists. They have like the illuminating mist, they have a lot of setting sprays, and I like the majority of them, but this is a product that I just don't understand. When you spray it, it looks like a nice fine mist, but it's not. It's very sticky. Uncomfortably sticky. I don't understand this. It's supposed to plump and hydrate. Maybe it does really lock in the moisture and plump your skin. But I've tried this on top of makeup. Hated it. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just strictly for underneath your makeup. Tried it that way and I didn't like it. It made my skin feel tight and weird. And I just don't see the purpose of it. I don't see the use for it. Even though it is an affordable product, just don't understand it. 
and I will never ever use it again because it just does not feel nice on the skin. I have so many setting sprays and like beauty mists that I love that are hydrating and plumping and I just like, mm -mm. This next product is a brand I recently discovered, pretty new to Sephora, it is Lila B. And I really like the Lila B setting spray, it's very similar to the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. It's really, really nice. It's very pricey, but it's very, very nice. I also really like the Lila B like, face powder, I think it has a nice finish, very natural. This, however, I don't like this. This is the B Stunning Palette Perfection Eye Quad. This little eye quad is $58. I personally don't think this this is swatching like a $58 eye quad. Do you know what I mean? It, I mean, it's nice. It has decent pigmentation. You could totally get like a very natural eye look with this. But no way is this worth $58. You can get this exact quad pretty much at the drugstore by Wet n Wild with the exact same pigmentation because it's not like this is like a five-star eyeshadow. It has like okay pigmentation. I'm not really happy with this. I kind of purchased this thinking it was gonna be really rich and pigmented because of the price point. I don't know if I had higher expectations than I should, but I was expecting to use a very buttery, delicious quad, and it kind of fell short. And I know the packaging is stunning and beautiful. It's very, very heavy, but I'd rather money go into the formula versus the packaging. You know what I mean? Like, you could tone down the packaging a little bit, Lila, and I'll still be okay with it if that means your actual product is just gonna be a little bit better. You know what I mean? Another little eyeshadow thing I didn't really like, but it wasn't an arm and a leg, so you know, it's okay. This is the Burt's Bees Eyeshadow Trio in Shimmering Nudes. I have another trio that has like purples in it. I think it's called like Countryside Lavender. I haven't tried that trio yet. There's a deep purple in that one that I really want to try, but this is okay. I think Wet n Wild eyeshadows are way better. They have trios that look similar to this. This video is not sponsored by Wet n Wild, by the way. I keep talking about them, but they're so affordable and so good, and they have a bunch of trios that I like way more than this. I think they have a lot better pigmentation. Burt's Bees is drugstore, so it's affordable, but it's not the cheapest at the drugstore either, you know? I really like this chocolate color, but I know myself, I'm just not gonna reach for this. I don't see myself using these. It just doesn't have the oomph I'm looking for, you know? I don't know. Have you tried any of the other ones? Are the other ones better than this? Maybe Shimmering Nudes is a dud, but have you tried the rest? I would love to know your thoughts on these. Okay, so I was so looking forward to this Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. First of all, the packaging is beautiful. I think I saw like a few ads with this product and people's eyelashes looked crazy and voluminous, but it didn't do that for me. I'm so bummed. This didn't really give me any volume. It gave me a decent amount of length, but personally for me, I look for something that's a little bit more voluminous versus lengthening. It just made my lashes look like really skinny and there wasn't enough drama to this. I think Urban Decay has created other mascaras in the past that I've liked more than this. This Troublemaker one was just like an eh and I don't know, I don't think it's worth the money. It's like, mm. Okay, so I'm truly shocked I don't like this product. I've read so many amazing reviews on this. I was really looking forward to it as well. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm finally gonna find a MAC Painterly Paint Pot dupe or like a MAC Soft Ochre dupe. This is the Tarte Lid Lock Eye Base in the shade Buff. This made my eyelids look like they were 100 years old. I don't know why, honestly, I've tried it a couple of times. I was like, maybe I didn't really moisturize my eyes. I have dry skin. Maybe I need to give it a little bit more moisture. No. If you have very dry eyelids, I don't think you would like this product. I mean, I could be wrong. I read so many good reviews, but for my skin type, it just didn't work for me. Eyeshadow would just skip on top of this. It looked really patchy. Things were not applying well on top of this because it just looked so dry. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with my face? Everybody loves this and it just did not work for me. Okay, so my next product is another highlight. I feel like I have highlights in every single disappointing products video. I guess I'm just very picky with my highlights. I think that's like the one makeup item I'm like very like about. This is the Jouer Powder Highlight in the shade Rose Gold. Jouer has some of the best highlights I've ever used. I've ranted about the citrine situation in the past. I don't want to really get into it, but I definitely think they changed their formula of their highlights before they were like ultra metallic and wet looking and now they're just not as good. The new citrine is still nice. I can still use it, it still gives me a glow, but it's not like the old citrine, you know. But this color in rose gold, I, I don't like it. To me, it just doesn't really highlight my skin. It just deposits a bunch of gold glitter on my face. The base of the color is nice. It has like a nice pinky rose undertone, but there's so many gold glitters in this. I don't like how it looks on the skin. It doesn't really look flattering on me personally. I just think they have other highlights that are way nicer than this. If they would just take out 
all the glitter and maybe replace it with like an actual golden sheen. It would be like a really pretty duochrome, like that would look really nice, but this glittery situation here is just not working for me personally. I've tried to use this a couple times on the cheeks and every time I put it on, I'm like, ah, why did I put it on? It looks eh, so chunky. Okay, so this next product, the only reason it's disappointing to me is because I don't think it's worth the money. Dose of Colors has like a very similar product to this. I think I've even seen a more affordable brand besides Dose of Colors do something like this. This is the Tom Ford Cream and Powder Eye Color Duo thing. You have the cream eyeshadow on the bottom, and then here at the top you pop this open and you have your powder shadow. This is a great product. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It has amazing pigmentation. It looks stunning. Like, I've used this a couple times and I'm not gonna lie, it is beautiful. But it's a $62 cream eyeshadow. And yes, you get a cream and a powder, but it's $62. You can just head on over to Dose of Colors. They have a ton of different ones. They look just like this. So for that reason, I just don't think it's worth it. It's not necessarily disappointing, so maybe I shouldn't have put it in this video. It would be different if this was like way better than the Dose of Color ones, but no, they're like the same. Actually, I would love to do another dupes video. I haven't done a dupes video in such a long time, like an affordable dupes for high-end makeup kind of video. Let me know if you wanna see that in the comments below. I'll gather up some high-end makeup and I'll find some dupes for them. I honestly don't remember why or when I bought this. To be honest, it's really good. It's just not not sixty-two dollars good, you know. Okay, and then my last disappointing product is actually a hair product. I feel like I've spoken about this in the past already, but I don't think so because it was in my bin, and the things in my bin I haven't spoken about yet. But why do I feel like I've disliked this in the past? I don't know. This is the Orive Curl Shaping Mousse or Oribe. I don't know how the fancy people say it. This curl shaping mousse just didn't work for me. I do like a lot of Orive products. He has like a golden hair oil that's really, really nice. It's pricey, but I really like how it makes my hair feel. This makes my hair feel a little too crunchy for me. I usually go for mousses that are meant for curly hair because I always use mousse when I have curly hair just to get the most out of my curls. And there's a few I really like. I don't like my hair to be too crunchy or like too stiff. When I use a little bit of this, it's not too bad. But honestly, I don't think it does much for the price. I have other mousses that are a bit cheaper that I like more than this. It looks a little bit more frizzy versus when I use other mousses. I don't know, it just didn't work for my hair. I'm sure there's a lot of people who love this mousse, but for me personally, it just didn't work for me. I'm gonna give this to my mom, see if it maybe works out for her we have completely different hair types so I don't know maybe this works out for her but for my frizzy puffy hair it just I didn't like it but yeah guys that completes this video these were products I was recently testing out and I just didn't really like them that much I know these videos seem very negative and I hope I'm not coming off like too harsh or too strong I'm really sorry if I am but I'm just giving you my opinions on products and why they didn't work out for me leave me a comment down below letting me know a recent product that you hated or that you just really didn't like why did it disappoint you tell me the story down below I'd love to know but yeah guys that completes this video thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video bye this made my eyes look so uh, uh. This, mm -mm. I that that was that was weird. But these, but these, they're a little less, they're a little less dust, they're a little less. This is these. Ah, oh my gosh, I'm dropping everything. So this next product is from a brand that I just. Oh my god, almost gave me a whole attack. Uh, I don't, I, I don't get it. Really, paint pot dupe or like a Mac soft oper, oper.